project that I got going on. It probably takes several months to complete, but uh, so recently I looked into doing solar. I live in Phoenix, Arizona, so we got tons of sun, so it's kind of stupid not to do solar. And so I got an estimate from one of the local companies. And they estimated $24,500 to put in a 7.8 kilowatt system. So with doing a little bit of research, I was able to find out, first of all, I can do my own solar system. I'm completely allowed to, in, to install it myself. And I can do it for a whole lot less. equipment which are the panels and some of the other odds and ends and uh, by buying it from a company in Flagstaff I was able to save like a thousand dollars in shipping which is pretty significant to me so it's worth the two hour drive to go and pick them up that's what we're doing right now I decided to go with a system by Enphase which is a microinverter system because the system that the company was going to install uses a single inverter and so it has uh, several panels that are wired in series and so you have probably two maybe three strings of panels that are wired in series well if a portion of one of those panels is shaded then the entire string is reduced and my neighbor behind me which is west of me has a massive eucalyptus tree that shades 80% of my roof in the afternoon so come 3 30 4 o'clock most of my roof is shaded so the, the system would be pretty much useless if any of those panels are shaded so with a little bit of research, I was able to find two systems that I was kind of back and forth in between. One of them was from Enphase, the other one was Solar Edge. Solar Edge still uses a single inverter, but it has optimizers at each panel, so that if one of those panels is shaded, then it kind of basically skips over it, I guess. Or I don't know, it doesn't affect the rest of the, out uh, the output of the rest of them. But you still have DC coming off the roof, going to an inverter, and then it goes to AC and goes into your panel. Within phase, you have an inverter at each panel. So you never have DC coming off the roof. You only have AC coming off the roof, which is a lot easier to wire. It is a little bit more expensive compared to like the Solar Edge. Both the Solar Edge and the Enphase are both quite a bit more expensive than the other system, which I believe was like a Sunny Boy Inverter, SMA, something like that. And uh, one of those systems would have been around like, I want to say like 9,000. But I wanted to have a better system, so it's worth paying a little bit more in order to get the better system, the more efficient system. So I decided to go with the Enphase system. Also with the Enphase system, they have batteries, which are pretty cool. Each one is 1.2 kilowatts, and they're about $2,000 each. So in the long run, it is a little bit more expensive than say the LG Chem or the Tesla Powerwall, but you can buy them one at a time, two at a time, and you can add them in, and they're super easy to add in. Again, it's all AC wiring, so they're really simple, really easy to put in. And uh, so that's the system that I decided to go with. I wasn't gonna do it until October, November, because uh, in Phoenix, it's quite hot in the summer, so I don't wanna get up on the roof. But uh, it, today is July 12th, yeah, July 12th. So on summer solstice, 
this company that I was going to buy my equipment from had a 10% off sale. Wasn't prepared to buy them, really wasn't planning on buying them until like October or November until I was ready to install it. But when I saw that sale, 10% was too good to pass up and it was a one day only sale for summer solstice. So I went ahead and pulled the trigger and I saved like, I want to say $1,300. The final purchase came out to eleven thousand seven hundred, and uh, in another uh, part of the video, I'll, I'll show you my invoice that shows you the equipment and, and the price, what it ended up being. And uh, so, my initial system is going to be a six point seven kilowatt system with two batteries, so a total of uh, two point four kilowatt hours of battery power. I do plan on adding in six more panels and uh, I would like to add in at least four more batteries but I'm gonna wait so I can get this portion handled and get it installed and then uh, next year at the beginning of next year I'll get a 30% federal rebate on the solar so then I can go and buy the six more panels and whatever else I want to buy and then um, there's no limit on how many times you can claim that. So you can break it up over a couple of years. So when I buy more equipment, the beginning of next year, the following year, I can uh, claim that as for the 30%. So it's, uh, I'm pretty excited. It's, it, it does look like it's gonna be uh, a pretty long process. So I, I'd say the more difficult part is uh, getting it approved by my power company and getting the permits from the city of Phoenix. They both seem like the, it, that's going to be the hard part. The installation actually seems like it'll be a lot easier than getting the permits and getting the approvals and all that stuff. That seems like they, they make it fairly difficult for the average person. So hopefully uh, we can get through that without any problems. And there's a few codes that I am having trouble looking up. I'm trying to find videos on YouTube about it. There's not a whole lot. And the ones that I am finding do it a couple of different ways. And the biggest, the, the biggest difficulty that I'm finding is how to do the grounding wires. Because you're supposed to run a six gauge wire to ground the system in case of lightning strike or whatever else. I, I might be grossly un overestimating the lightning, but I don't think a six gauge wire is going to handle the current that lightning has, but, but what do I know? Uh, so I can't find out if that six gauge wire has to go from the panels all the way to the ground without any breaks, because that's gonna be kind of difficult because there's gonna be several different groups of panels in different areas on my roof to uh, like I said because of the shade of the eucalyptus tree so they're going to be broken up into different sections on my roof and then I'm going to have to run three six gauge wires all the way to the ground uh, all the way to the grounding rod that I have to install uh, other videos I've seen they run them to a bus bar and then from there they run a four gauge wire from the bus bar to the grounding rod. So I can't find out if it definitely has to be a one solid wire from the panels all the way to the grounding rod, or if all the panels basically just have to be tied together with one wire, then you can go to a bus bar and then to the grounding rod. I, I can't get this answered, so. If you guys know, if you guys watch this and you know one way or the other what it is, what it's supposed to be in Phoenix, leave a comment below. That'd be great. That'd be a huge help. Um, but uh, we'll pick up uh, this video again once I pick up the panels and get them loaded onto the truck and trailer. So I'm all loaded up, got the panels on the trailer, 
microinverters and all the other stuff is in the back of the truck and that's it i'm ready to head back to phoenix thank you northern arizona wind and sun in flagstaff all right so we made it back and uh here are most of my panels this is 16 of them and then there are another six that i had to stick on the other side of my truck on the far side over there for a total of 22 panels each of them 305 watts so we're starting off with a 6.7 kilowatt system and then the box is here this is the envoy combiner box and then we got the trunk cables here mounting brackets for the batteries here these down here are the two batteries and these two boxes are the micro inverters so it's going to be a long process but this is the beginning of it i still have a lot more to get like the iron ridge rails to mount them on the roof i still got to get permits and get uh, approved by srp and then I also still have to get a whole bunch of wiring and conduit and all that fun stuff. But uh, this is what we're starting with. This will be the end of part one.